Ooh, I hate subscriptions and I know everybody hates subscriptions. So should you pay that Adobe Creative Club subscription or is there a better alternative? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, what is up? A few days ago, I've popped on my Instagram and I told people, guys, I know that you love to hate on Photoshop, but this is still a core skill that every designer needs to master because you, you're an image maker. It doesn't matter if you're doing web design or UI design, you need to know how to handle images. And a lot of people told me in the comments, yeah, but you know, I, uh, we agree that you need to know how to handle images, but Photoshop is not the only solution. A lot of people were talking about Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, and what I saw mostly in the comments were that the reason people were hating on Photoshop is not because the software is bad, is mostly because they were hating on Adobe's subscription model and because they don't want to pay a subscription to one of, you know, to, to Adobe or specifically it's kind of a high subscription. It's around 70 or $80 per month, which ends up at a thousand dollars per year. So I want to talk about my perspective. I am paying Adobe um, cloud services. You know, I am paying that $80 subscription being on it. And I, I want to share my perspective as somebody who's been kind of in the design industry for over 20 years, started out by, you know, when I was a student, there was no alternatives to Photoshop, right? There were no other software um, available. And it was costing like a lot. It was then like, I think maybe a $1,000 just to use just to buy a version of Photoshop. So if you were starting out as a hobby, you had to kind of find it illegally on the internet just to teach yourself and basically started paying for it. When I, you know, went on my own professional way when I started freelancing it was time to you know start paying for it um, and I think that it's at some point a few years ago Adobe d I understood that the the model of having a, a large price on its software um, made people not want to update every year and so they've kind of bundled the software turned it into a subscription which is basically a trend subscription or a business model trend around the internet um, around the world now and and it does make a lot of sense for me as somebody who buys the bundle. So I, here's my perspective, basically. Right, I was looking into Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo, and even though I've never used them, honestly, it looks, it looks like a great software. It probably have most has most of the similar features and capabilities, and it's a very, very low price point. I think it was like 30 or $50 for the license of the software and you don't, you're not on a subscription. Actually watching their trailer video, most of what they're saying there is there's no subscription. That's their pitch basically. Buy our software without a subscription. However, you probably need to buy it again and again every year or something if you want the newer version, which if you're trying to save money, again, it's going to lead to the same problem that Adobe had where you might not want to update because, you know, and stay with a with an old software because you don't want to pay again. Now the thing for me is that I don't look at Photoshop as a single software within my workflow. So you know, I'm designing website, I'm designing products, and I'm doing videos, I'm doing a lot of things as a creative person. And I'm actually not using only Photoshop, I'm using the whole bundle almost on a daily basis. And I'll give you a use case. So obviously, I'm using Photoshop to edit images for everything for websites, for my Instagram posts, for everything I'm using Photoshop. So that is kind of a still a daily software. But whenever I'm doing logo design, for example, or icon design, I'm using Illustrator. So that's software number two, another software you need to purchase. Whenever I'm doing, you know, um, stuff that I need to print, like business cards and stuff like that, I'm using InDesign which is a software oriented for stuff that you want to print. So that's th software number three. Whenever I'm editing videos, so me specifically, I have a YouTube channel, so obviously I'm editing daily. But even when I'm working with my clients, sometimes I'm editing videos for them. That's another software. Um, I'm now I'm recording this audio, and sometimes I'm recording for a podcast, so I'm using the Adobe Audition. This software is called. So I'm using so many softwares from Adobe that if you compress them, I'm actually using Adobe Typekit, and I've talked about this in multiple projects where I'm when I'm building websites in Webflow, I'm just linking it up to my, you know, to my Adobe um, Typekit or Adobe Fonts. It's called right now, and I'm getting 
the ability to use for free amazing premium fonts, both on my computer, but also when I'm publishing um, websites and for my clients. So that all these services together, you know, I'm using, let's say, 10 services from this software. If you take them and you divide them up, you know, it's like $7 per per software per month or something like that. So for me, it definitely makes sense to bundle them all together, have them interconnected where you can just open one or drop file from one software into the other. All this, the, the bundling creates an amazing value for me, which is, you know, it's it's the cost of doing business. So paying a thousand dollars per per year for all my software which enables me to you know to to make six figure as a freelance designer usually mostly these tools then i think it's a low cost of of doing business if i would try to optimize you know for a lower price and then start to band, bundle all these software myself for me i'm not sure how much money it would save i'm i'm sure for sure that it will add a lot of headache for me so for me in the position where I am. And honestly, that's the perspective I took even when I started freelancing. I'm trying to think when I started paying them, maybe six, seven, eight years ago when I went freelance and started paying them the subscription. Um, it still makes sense for me. However, I'm trying to think right now, when I got started, there were not many alternatives, right? And now there are alternatives and there are alternatives which are good. You know, you can use, if you're designing interfaces, you can use Sketch. You can use, you know, um, Figma. You're still going to need to couple them with an image editing software. So it's not going to be enough. You're going to have to purchase Sketch. Then you're going to have to uh, pr purchase um, Affinity Photo and Af uh, Affinity Designer. And you know, you're going to have to bundle them all together. But I think if you're just starting out and you are limited on, you know, on cash and you're just testing out, then perhaps trying to bundle exactly the stuff that you need might end up being cheaper for you. But for me, as I'm thinking about my business in, in a strategic way, for me thinking, all right, the cost of, of having all the software I need, all the software that I need um, is $1,000 if I put pay the subscription. For me, that seems like the easy solution. And I have to say, I'm not sure that's a good thing or a bad thing, but Adobe is such a powerhouse that even, for example, when they were actually late to the, let's say, screen design play, right, with Adobe XD. Um, so Figma and Sketch were there much, much bef before them. And I actually, even though I had the subscription, actually paid for Sketch because it was so much better than what they had. Right now, but however, because Adobe is such a powerhouse and they're really, they understood where they made the mistake. Now they're putting so much effort on XD that XD actually caught up with everything else that's on the market with Sketch and Figma. And and so right now for me, it makes sense. So my, you know, my Sketch subscription just, uh, or yearly license, whatever, just expired a few, a few months ago. And I was like, why should I pay them again? You know, I'm getting XD for free right now because I'm on the subscription and it's getting better and better every month. I should probably make the move to XD and that's and that makes sense for me. So I do think that on the long run, just because they are this huge core with so much power in the design industry, I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying it's a good thing that we have kind of only one dominant player and I'm, I am happy there is innovation from other players. I'm just saying that when there is a huge player like that that makes that pushes the whole industry forward even if it's sometimes late um, enjoying the benefits of working with this big player for me it works well and I from the beginning even though Adobe XD was not good at the beginning and I think I have a video from a few years ago saying this it's not good right now but don't bet against Adobe because they're they're huge and they're smart and they 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 know how to build good software so eventually it will you know, it will get there. And I do feel like right now we're there. So that's my opinion about the subscription model. You know, it might be the right thing for you or it might not be. For me, saves time, headache, and I'm making use of the whole bundle, depending on your situation. It might be the same for you or it might be different. Or um, yeah, so let me know in the comments what's your situation and what works best for you. Because I know you you might say, oh, I'm using Affinity Designer, but that's not the only software you use. So how do you bundle? What software, what's your software stack for running your design business? Let me know and I'll see you on the next video.